It is high school football season. It has started once again. Joining us on the phones this year, Stephen Orr with West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show. And Stephen, welcome back and welcome to another season of high school football. Oh, Chad, well, you know, we look forward to it all year and we're, we're glad to be ready to kick off. You know, in fact, uh, this is the 20th year for the West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show. Started out simply as a show following Floyd Data High School football here in Floyd Data back in 1996. So uh, kind of a special year, too, and it's the 20th an- uh, anniversary of the show, and we're excited and ready to get things kicked off. That's awesome. And uh, really uh, across the region, uh, you have games that will be kicking off with cooler weather than expected, I'm sure. Well, and, and one of the things, you know, we it seems like there's one week every year, sometimes two, where Mother Nature uh, comes yeah. into play. And with the weather systems and the way things have been going, we're wondering if maybe opening week may not be that week is, this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I want to go through the some of the local teams here and, and just get your thoughts on, you know, maybe a not really a season preview, but things that fans can maybe expect. And, and, and I want to start off with, uh, Coronado last night, obviously they played and, and defeated Plainview, uh, but Plainview came, you know, came close to to a comeback there, didn't they? Well, you know, and that was a complete um, uh, contrast in styles of play. Coach Seth Parr, who has roots back to Plainview, but he's the high flying, wants to throw the football, really uh, get up and down the field, kind of more progressive. And Plainview comes in with a wing tee with a real strong core running backs, and they just want to grind the ball, make you. Uh, stop them. They want to eat, shorten the game as much as they can. Last night, uh, Plainview let Coronado get in front of them a little bit, and uh, they weren't able to come back, although they did make a late charge. But Coronado, which is something they haven't done recently, uh, they closed the deal. Coronado's big problem, especially last year, was they'd get off to a quick start, but they wouldn't close out that game. And I know Coach Parr said last night, they he wasn't necessarily completely happy uh, with their play. Thought they made too many mistakes, but you know some of that's just the first game of the season. But at the end of the day, they got the W. They had a lot of uh, positives there, and they were able to stop a team that was trying to come back on them. So you know, I think Coronado. What they've got to figure out how to do is to put the period at the end of the sentence and win those games. They lost several close games last year, and if they can flip that around, they can be in the conversation. Uh, we're uh, talking about high school football. What about Lubbock High? Uh, they play uh, t- tonight. Uh, uh, what can we expect from Lubbock High, not only tonight, but for the season? Well, I think Lubbock High, you know, they're taking on a Seminole team that had a really disappointing season as well last year. I think Lubbock High came in last year with hoping to see some improvement and really didn't see it, at least in the record. Uh, this ought to be an interesting game tonight, and it's going to be interesting to see which one of these teams can come out and actually start that season with a win. I know they both desperately want it and need it. I think Lubbock High can be improved this year, uh, just building on what they had last year, but they've got to be consistent. They were very, very poor about protecting the football, and that's one of the things you have to do if you're going to win football games is you've got to hang on to the ball. So if they can improve on their turnovers a little bit, get a little more consistency on defense, I think we'll see a better team than what we saw last year. Uh, of course, uh, Lubbock High at Seminole uh, this evening, kickoff at 7.30. You can hear that game on our sister station, 13.40, The Fan. Uh, here on KFYO, we'll be airing Monterey at Odessa. Uh, tell us about the Monterey team and what they can expect this evening. Uh, I think Monterey is going to be there. I think, uh, you know, that was another team that they had some really unfortunate miscues last year. They're going to try to establish the run. They're going to be a strong ground team. Uh on defense, they're going to have to uh, just be able to step up and be really solid in what they do. But I think they've got the pieces in place uh, to have a really good season. Uh, interesting note, you know, Odessa High, uh, they're taking on Odessa. And uh, head coach there is Danny Severance that was at, Monter- at uh, Lubbock Estacado. So uh, he's familiar with Monterey and uh, Odessa looking to rebuild. They had a little bit of a disappointing season last year. So that should be a really good football game. Uh, what, speaking of Estacado, uh, they uh, they're going to be playing as well. And uh, who do they face tonight? And what are their what does their season outlook look like? For who's that? Estacado, Lubbock Estacado. They, you know, that's the fastest team it seems like in Lubbock year in and year out. They just they have that ability to put speed on the field, and um, they're taking on a Hereford team that went two and eight last year. Lubbock Estacado has beaten Hereford 
the three out of the last four times they've opened the season with Hereford. And uh, I think Estacada is going to have the athleticism to be there. It'll be interesting to see how they do after nine years of coach severance. How do they migrate to their new coach? Are they Is the system in place? Do they understand what they need to do? And I think if those pieces are there, we're going to be talking about them at the end of the year. I uh, love it, Cooper, tonight. Lubbock Cooper and Amarillo, this is one of the best games we have on our board, I think. Uh, Lubbock Cooper certainly a very strong team the last couple of years. I don't expect anything less from them, but they're going to take on an Amarillo High team that won District 2 of 6A last year, and Amarillo is always tough. They're a very disciplined football team. They run the ball well. Uh, they will try to out-physical Lubbock Cooper, and so uh, it's a really great test. We're going to learn a lot about Cooper and about Amarillo High School uh, both coming out of this game, and it's one of our feature games this week. What about friendship? Friendship, uh, you know, I think they're in the conversation every year, and there's no reason to take them out of it until you see something different. Uh, they're going to take on an El Paso team that uh, they should beat. Of course, you know, last year they had had a little hiccup there in El Paso, so we'll see. But I, I believe, like, friendship's going to be uh, one of those top teams in the district when we come to the end of the year. They're up a classification, uh but I still think they're going to be good. Uh, visiting with Stephen Orr, West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show. Stephen, here in a little bit I'll ask you what, what the uh, game of the week will be or maybe one or two of the games uh, that people have to go out and see. I think you might have just uh, mentioned one earlier, but uh, what, what, do, uh, what, are, what are some of the other schools in, in the region looking like this year, some uh, games and some schools that you'll be keeping an eye on tonight? i tell you what, we need to keep our eye on Level Land. That is a team that, in my opinion, the last couple of years – has underachieved based on the athleticism they have on the field. And once again, they suffer from – they were 7-5 and five the last two seasons, and I could go back into both seasons and I can find two or three games easily uh, that if they had avoided the critical miscue at the critical juncture, if they had put the period at the end of the sentence, that those aren't 10-win seasons. Uh, they've got the ability now they've just got to figure out how to put it all together and stay in those close games uh, i believe it was last year uh, their first three games of the season level and lost by a total of nine points wow. and so that's one little mistake here or there that's the difference between winning and losing i think they're going to be a really good team um, a game tonight that we're going to really look forward to and our two teams that we'll be talking about at the end of the year as far as their district races is shallow water taking on idaloo and Idaloo won this game last year. Shallow Water going to have to figure out how to uh, replace the running back Ogle, who was so dynamic and a part of that team last year. But I think they've got the pieces to do that. They've also got a new coach in. So how does that new system fit with the kids? Uh, but Shallow Water, they always have the talent. They, they're always in the conversation. I see that being the same. And Idaloo is Idaloo. Uh, they're going to be out there, and they're going to be tough as well. So that's a couple other teams that I think. And then New Deal, uh, they were lightning fast last year. They went through their district undefeated, and uh, they've got that uh, that uh, that skill position talent back. And I think it'll be another team that's at the top of their district race. Visiting with Stephen Orr, West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show. All right, Stephen, if uh, well, if uh, people want to uh, get out and uh, see the uh, maybe a one or two of the games of the week this week, what are those games? I tell you what, I like Level Land at Muleshoe. I mean, I talked about Level Land being a team to watch. Muleshoe is another team that had a really good season last year. They bring back a lot of experience, and uh, they're going to build on the success they had last year. That'll be a really good game. Shallow Water Idaloo in Shallow Water is going to be a dandy of a football game. And still, I think my game of the week is going to be uh, Amarillo High and Lubbock Cooper. That's going to be an awesome ball game if those teams both show up and play to their potential. Stephen Orr, it's uh, week zero, correct? No, we did away with that. We did away with week zero. Now we're at week we one. We finally got it logical makes sense. last year and started calling it week one, <laughs> and we now go week one through week eleven. And oh. I've been able to burn that soapbox in the fireplace. <laughs> well, congratulations! <laughs> I thought I was going to get you on a soapbox. That's one less thing to complain about. All right, I'm sure we'll find other things, <laughs> right? Well, I, I can find something, but I don't want to look. <laughs> Stephen, have a great day. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Chad. Yeah, have a good one. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Good deal. All right, that's uh, Stephen Orr, West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show here on the Chad HD Show. And uh, remember, tonight here on KFYO, Monterey at Odessa, uh, I think it's uh, probably about a 7.15 p.m. pregame, 7.30 kick. 
Uh, and then on 1340, the fan, our sister station, 730 kick between Lubbock High and Seminole. And then on both stations, uh, following each game, you'll have the West Texas Friday Night Scoreboard Show. We'll be visiting with Stephen Orr throughout high school football season on Fridays at 9 o'clock.